Hello again, this is Robert Adut with yaymath.org. Welcome to Yaymath in Studio. Here I am in this beautiful studio space with my friend Zach behind camera. Today we're going to be talking about an Algebra 2 topic, also happens in pre-calculus, which is identifying conic sections. So we're going to go over the four conic sections here that are included, and then I'm going to give you ways to identify as the second you see it, on the page, you're like, ah, I know what that, which one that is. Because at first it can seem intimidating because there's these long equations, um, but there's ways to decode so that it's, it really just jumps off the page at you. That's the goal by the end of today's lesson. All right, let's do this. Yay math! So let's list out the conic sections first. We have the parabola. All right. The parabola is looking like one of these maybe, you know, the little u shape, little bowl. It can go up, down, left, or right. Um, then we have, you know what, before we go into the other ones, why don't we actually uh, put in some of the characteristics of the parabola, and then we'll, we'll identify the other ones. There's four total, all right, it's the first one. So the parabola is basically the only conic section in which of the two variables, only one of them is squared. That's the giveaway. So you have something like this. You have your like y equals x squared, for example. You'll notice only the x is squared, in which case that's the parabola that's facing up and down. Okay, if you had x equals y squared, that's the parabola that's facing right. Um, if you had x equals negative y squared, that in turn would be the parabola facing left. So no matter what throughout the equation, no matter how you slice it or dice it, you will never see both of the variables squared. So a lot of times in the books they'll say, identify the conic, and then write it in standard form. So let's throw out a, a, a possible example. You could see something like, let's say it was x squared mm, minus 4x um, plus 2, whatever, equals, how about minus y? That'll be fun. Plus 2 minus y equals 0. See, again, this is the idea. You're looking at that thing, you're like, I don't know what that is. Um, but the second we know what to look for, in which only one variable is squared, we instantly know it's a parabola. In that case, it is a parabola because we notice that the x value is squared, right? So these two will be paired, and the y is not, so this is a parabola. So we're gonna put it into this standard form in which one of the variables is isolated. In this case, the y needs to be the one that's isolated. So suppose we add y to both sides, bring it over here, just going to write it on the left now. So you get y equals x squared minus 4x plus 2. So it's not in standard form, so get ready, hold on, saddle up. It's time for completing the square lifestyle. So here's the dish, the, the dish you. I'm going to dish out the issue. Here's the dish you. Uh, we can't complete the square. We can't create a factorization of x squared minus 4x plus 2. So what many students like to do is they like to move this two over to the right, put it over here. We ask ourselves, what would this value have to be such that this can be factored, okay? There is a process to it. I'm gonna give you that process in just a second. But essentially, we're looking for uh, two numbers that multiply to some mystery number and add to negative four, in which those numbers are the same. So this is the giveaway in your detective game. What two numbers would add to make negative 4 in which those numbers are the same. Those numbers are negative 2 and negative 2. We know that. And so if those are the numbers, negative 2 and negative 2, what do they multiply to make? They must multiply to make positive 4. Negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4. So we're going to add 4 here. Now, according to the rules of algebra, this equation requires balance. If we added 4 to this side, we're required to add it to this side as well of the equals. But once you get going, you become a pro at this stuff, I'm allowed to simply go plus 4 minus 4, right? So that had no net change to the equation. That's sort of like if I take out $4 of my wallet, put it on the table, and then pick it up again. It's like the same concept. I, there was no change to the amount of money in my pocket, um, except for the scare of losing $4. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. This now factors to... All right, what two numbers add to make negative 4 and multiply to positive 4? Those numbers were negative 2 and negative 2. There they are. And then this happens to add up to negative 2 as well, right? That's a total coincidence. 
Uh, and so here's your equation in standard form, right? This vertex is at two, negative two, and this parabola faces up, it's that one. All right, so that's the first one. It's a parabola when only one of them is squared, one of the variables. So the next one is the circle. Circle coming up, okay. So from now on, both of the variables will be squared, x and y. The question is how and what it looks like. So the circle is a very um, straightforward formula. It's pretty much this, x squared plus y squared equals, let's put down like 16 as an example. So you'll notice both x and y are squared. You'll notice that there's a plus between them, that's important. And this is the radius squared. So if this was r squared, that would lead us to conclude that r equals four, the radius is four, all right? So you'll notice both of them squared and the radius is four. It doesn't matter how you slice it. This could be x minus one squared plus y plus two squared equals some sort of other radius. Let's put 16 again, why not? So the r is still four. This is still a circle. The center is one, negative two. You'll notice this opposite effect, similar to what we had within the square of the parabola. You have this opposite effect because one minus one makes this go to zero, so that's the center point. So the center is at one, opposite of negative two here is, excuse me, opposite of positive two is negative two. And then again, this is radius squared, so the radius is four, all right? So that's the giveaway. A simple example would be like, let's say x squared plus y squared minus 6x plus 10x uh, minus, let's say, 20 equals 0. Again, at first glance, looks intimidating. But we notice x squared and y squared are both squared. x and y are both squared, and there's a plus between them. So we're automatically thinking circle. And another thing is that we notice no coefficients out here. Note this marker is very new. It's like, ah, oh, satisfying. <laughs> very new markers. I like to fidget. That's what I do with my hands a lot. It helps me think. So you'll notice no coefficients out here. So that's the giveaway that this is immediately a circle. We want to make it look like this. So again, we're going to do a little completing the square party. So let's group our x's. We got x squared. We got minus 6x. Leave a space. We got our plus y squared plus 10x. Leave a space. Add 20 to both sides. So it's going to be equal to 20. Great, so let's complete the square. Numbers that add to negative six and multiply to blah. So those two numbers must be negative three, negative three. So this would be a plus nine. So I'm gonna add nine here, and I'm gonna add nine here, all right? Again, so I did promise you that the, there is a process for this. Um, the books offer this process, and it's fine to use it as long as you understand the context. What I did before, what two numbers add to make negative six that are the same, they will be negative three and negative three. Therefore, those two numbers multiply to make nine. And therefore, that factorization works out as follows. X minus three times itself would distribute out, would foil out to make this. Now the process. All you do, right? All right, we're gonna do this again and again today. You take this B value, which is B here. You half it to make negative three. And you square that number and that's your nine. Okay, again, you take whatever this value is, cut it in half, that makes negative three, and then you square it, negative three squared is positive nine. So that's the, how you know what to add here, and subsequently here. Okay, let's do it again then, now that we're in zone. Uh, half this is five, squared is 25. Let's go patriotic. Blue, plus 25 plus 25, and we'll get x plus, or excuse me, y plus five squared. And when the dust settles, this is 25, um, this is 45 plus nine, that's 54. All right, and so now this is a circle. We notice no coefficients. The center is at opposite three, opposite negative five, and the radius is the square root of 54. All right, and that simplifies. Nine times six is inside. Nine's a perfect square. Hiding inside, 54. 
Square root of 9 simplifies to the number 3 root 6. So there's your radius. So you go up, down, left, and right, 3 root 6, which is roughly uh, 7 point something, right? That's close to square root of 49, a little more. So roughly 7 point something, up, down, left, and right from this point. All right, so that's the circle. Two down, two to go. Okay, next up is the ellipse. Ellipse is basically fancy for oval. All right, you could have an ellipse that looks like this or like one of these. The good news is it very much looks like a circle, not only in shape, but also an equation, right? So you'll see the same thing going on. You'll see, let's say, 2x squared, uh, let's say, plus uh, 12x um, plus, see, I'm, I'm going to mix it up today, baby. Mix it. 4y equals 10 plus, how about minus y squared? This is kind of fun because you can craft it however you want, right? Again, looking at this at face value, eek, right? E-E-K exclamation point. I don't know what this is. I don't know how to identify until you recognize that the ellipse, why don't we make a few notes here? A few notes. Only one variable squared. That's good. Here you have both squared, no coefficients. <laughs> Looks like the Universal logo, Hollywood, California. Instead of universals, like no coefficients. <laughs> and that's like the scary music from the movie. Wah, wah, like an alien movie in black and white. No coefficients. Which isn't scary at all, actually. It's very inviting. But the ellipse does have coefficients. So again, it's both squared. Both squared. And uh, leading coefficients. Look, don't let the vocab mess with you. This is a leading coefficient, that's all. It's the number in front of the uh, squared value that's other than one, all right? So it's a leading coefficient that's not one, that the circle did not have, this does have it. Okay, and then we have like, oh, well how do we prove that both variables are squared? Oh, here we go, if we add y squared to both sides, then that proves it. If we go plus y squared, plus y squared over here, then we prove that we have our x squared plus y squared on one side of the equals, so this is indeed proving to be an ellipse. Let's go ahead and group. 2x squared plus 12x, leave a space, plus y squared plus 4y, that's fine, leave a space, equals the number 10. All right, to complete the square here, we first must factor 2 out so that we have a isolated x squared term. Here's what I mean. 2 comes out, x squared plus 2 times what would result in 12x? That's 6x. Still leave a space, close. Plus y squared plus 4y, leave a space, equals 10. Now we can complete the square, all right? Half of b, half of 6 is 3. Squared is 9, so add 9 over here. And now the temptation that a lot of students have is to add 9 over here too. They're correct in spirit, in theory. They're adding nine, meaning they added nine here. But the issue is, we really didn't add nine to this side of the equation. We added 18 to this side of the equation because the nine is affected by the two's distribution. So this would have to be plus 18 over here, all right? I trust that you can remember that, okay? Just look at it here. Two times nine is really 18, so it's a really ne a net change of 18 to the left side. Thus, to counterbalance, we add 18 to the right side. All right? Continuing our America colors. America! Plus 4, half of this squared is 4. Plus 4. Good. Now we're going to factor. So this is 2. X plus 3 squared plus Y plus 2 squared equals, uh, this is 28 plus 4 is 32. All right, and then we have our ellipse. Technically, the form for ellipse, the standard form, now that we recognize coefficients out here, 
is to set this value to one. You'll see that in the books. Once it's no longer a circle, once it's like loses, it's, it's like a symmetry. Well, again, an ellipse is symmetric, but not completely. And once it loses that perfect round shape and becomes wide like this, you, you step away from the x squared plus y squared equals r squared thing. Right? You step away from the thing we did on the last problem and you set this to one to help you graph. In order to do that, all right, let's go green and divide by 32 here, here, and here. So now we'll get the ultimate equation, the standard equation of ellipse, 2 and 32 go away, leaving 16 x plus 3 squared over 16 plus y plus 2 squared over 32 equals 1. So there's your standard equation of the ellipse. You'll notice the giveaways are both are squared, there's a plus, right? x and y are squared, there's plus between them. You have leading coefficients in front of x and not in front of y, right? If it was a 2 here as well, that's, that's sort of a, a sly little trick. If both were 2, you would divide them both and then they'd be, both be going away. But if you see that they're not the same, then that's the giveaway that what started as your circle is now weighted, weighted in terms of x, right? So you get this like little ripple effect on the circle, making it an ellipse. Let's do the hyperbola next. So with the hyperbola, you have hyperbola. That's one of these. Somewhat parabolic shapes, just facing outward from each other. You do have uppy downy as well. There you go, you have those. Okay. And so there's a sort of a neat trick that I, at least it worked for me, it occurred to me. You still have both squared, x and y squared. Right, we, to confirm, the only one in which one was squared was the parabola. The rest of the three, x and y, were both squared. But now, you don't have a plus between the two, you have a minus. Right, it's x squared minus y squared, or y squared minus x squared. And what that makes me think of was like, what started with x squared plus y squared, what started as plus between them was this harmonious shape where it's like plus, you're adding the two pieces together. Whereas if you have minus between them, it sort of ripped it apart and made it go like that. Even the ellipse had a plus between them. It was still, they're working it out. They're like, okay, I'll meet you in the middle. I'll like, we're a little weird, we're a little weird, but we still got harmony. We're still a, an oval, a circle. We can go around and round and round. But the second you put a minus, a little negativity here, rip apart, I'm not even gonna look at you anymore. We're not looking, we're not looking, okay? So the second you see a minus between the two squared, immediately hyperbola, that's the giveaway. That's all it is. Regardless of coefficients, regardless of coefficients, right? So even if there's coefficients, but still minus, 100% hyperbola. Let's give a brief example. With coefficients, let's go with 3x, we can even start with y squared now, you know, mix it up a bit. 3y squared um, plus, say, minus 24y uh, plus, whoa, minus, minus, right? I'm much more of a believer in harmony, so that's why I did the plus. Uh, x squared, let's go with, ooh, minus, this will be fun. Let's go with uh, 2x. And then we have equals, pick a number at random, let's go 5, won't matter, right? Whatever the problem is. So you'll notice I've already gotten to the habit of arranging, right? So the problems will be presented in different ways, but now since it's our fourth conic, that's where we got together. You can see I'm already arranging. You can see I'm already leaving a space here. So you're invited to do the same thing. You're going to group your y's. You're going to group your x's. Put the number on the other side. Complete the square. And then you'll be uh, set to go.